Welcome back, Stingers. In my hand, I have one of the most asked questions about Scorpio relationships that have been creeping around the internet spaces for a very long time. I'm going to break it down for you right now. Scorpio season is on its way, and I have four series for you guys. I'm so excited, one of which is a whole entire series about you know, the internet's most asked questions. I'm going to answer all of them during Scorpio season. So I'm really excited for that. So without further ado, let's just jump in. Somebody asks, who was the most toxic match for Scorpio? The answer was Leo. And then they follow up with a question of who is the best match, Pisces or Cancer? So they already assumed that it was one of the two <laughs> that were a best match. I know you guys are always talking about best matches. You're always DMing me. You're always putting questions in the commentary about this. You guys already know how I feel about this best match thing. You guys know that you guys have totally different charts than I do. What I need in my life is definitely not going to be what you guys need in your life. I told you to go to my website scorpiosunscorpionmoon.com and take my quizzes to figure out what type of Scorpio you fall into, what category you fall into. And so it's going to be different for everyone. But <laughs> what I am going to do right now is break a couple of things down. And hopefully in my response, you're going to get a lot back about, you know, what you've been asking me. It's going to answer a lot of your questions. It's going to answer a lot of things you're wasting your time thinking about. So let's talk about this toxic match. I don't like the word toxic because if you're attracting toxicity, into your life, then you need to get in the mirror immediately. You need to schedule an appointment with your psychiatrist immediately. You might need to get back on your meds immediately, okay? Because you invite toxic in. It just doesn't jump into your life, honey, okay? So what people meant by toxic probably is, you know, just not a really good match. We all know that Leo is a fixed um, masculine fire and it's square to Scorpio's feminine water personality. We know that it's not really a, um, a very comfortable, a very flowing type of match depending on who this Leo is it let's just let's just get this out of the way the elephant in the room about depends on your chart because i know a lot of you guys love to come in my comment section <laughs> okay and start saying depends on the chart and this that and the other um as if i i have not had my deep training in astrology darling <laughs> okay let's not get silly in the comments and let's not insult each other's intelligence okay that's what we're not going to do and so because Scorpio is feminine fixed water and Leo is masculine fixed fire, it's not really a combination that is very comfortable if you were to talk about the typical Leo and the typical uh, Scorpio. Now, qualities that I appreciate in Leo um, is something that my chart really, I would say, because I'm a strong Scorpio, I have a strong personality, and we've talked about this before, we've talked about how I respect loyalty, and I like individuals who have a very strong personality, very strong backbone, who can defend themselves, who are very independent, and who can take care of themselves. And Leo tends to be one of those people who just has those qualities. You know, they are fire, they initiate, they are independent, they are super self-sufficient, they can handle themselves. One thing I will say is that I would never have to worry about jumping in to defend a Leo. Never. I'm never looking over like, do you need me to help you? <laughs> do you need my assistance? Are you going to cry anytime soon? Like, do I need to baby you? Do I need to coddle you? 
And maybe your personality is in concert with that. You know, maybe you're the type of Scorpio who feels powerful coddling people. Maybe you feel powerful, you know, being the one that they can cry, you know, on your shoulder. And, you know, and this is when I made that video, how strong Scorpions don't attract Pisces. And you can go check that out. And my point was that, you know, a lot of Scorpios who are codependent and codependent meaning that you feel powerful when somebody else needs you and you align your situations, you align your life, you align your relationships in a way that they need you. And I know this because I used to be that person many, 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 many years ago. You know, I hung out with very weak people. The way I set up relationships was that, of course, they would need me. I was the smartest one in the room. I was the one with the most resources. So, of course, they would be needy towards me. And so many of you guys, particularly men, you know, when you're looking for female uh, relationships, um, and I'm talking about male-female relationships, you look for the weakest ones, you know, if you want to feel powerful in that way. You're like, oh, she needs me. Oh, she can't do without me. You know, this is the type who sits at home. She's like, oh, at work today, they were bothering me. And that, like this whole whiny behavior. And you're the one who can like hug her and be like, oh, I'll fix everything. Like that, those are the type of Scorpios who go for very weak personalities. You're very codependent. You need people to need you. This is how you get your power. And so... I'm the, the opposite. I've become the opposite. <laughs> I like extremely powerful people who can stand on their own. I don't want to have to run to you with tissues. I don't want to have to. And this is coming from somebody who's hung out with those individuals who they're claiming are the best match. I know the tears. I know the whining. I know the, what are you going to do? So-and-so's talking about me. I know the, the person who is waiting for me to be the savior and how, how um, disgusted I felt in those relationships. So what I will say about Leo is that they can handle themselves on their own. They are super independent. They are um, level-headed. They're not over emotional. I, I have not experienced that and I've hung out, you guys know I've hung out with Sun, Moon, Sun, Moon, Rising Leos. And um, I will say, you know, they they have a backbone. I mean, they have a backbone. They're leaders. They can take charge. They can handle shit, you know, simultaneously. They're not on their knees. They're not in a fetal position, okay? And if they are, they're not going to do it in front of you, <laughs> okay? They're going to do it by themselves with all the lights out at home when nobody can see them, okay? And so that part I do respect in a Leo. However, see, you knew this was coming. However, I would say that this is the part that comes in where that square comes in. And for my members, I am going to do a whole entire video for you guys. We're going to talk about squares. We're going to talk about friction. We're going to talk about how to handle that um, within your own chart and within other relationships if you have to because you don't have to deal with people who cause a lot of triggers and frictions. A lot of you guys just do that and um, that's really detrimental to your mental, spiritual, and emotional health. You don't have to, but if you do have to, you, we're all going to be in situations where we have to deal with square energy, okay? All of us have to do that, whether it's in our family, some of you are married to people who are constantly causing friction and you chose that for whatever reason honey <laughs> okay you chose that but um we're going to talk about that in the in, in my membership so now here's the part that gets a little tricky and you guys have read my book dating scorpio and you read read the part because i the opening i gave leo the opening um chapter honey because i know that they need that here's another thing leo's needing 
a certain amount of attention and it doesn't always have to be in the form of I'm on stage give me attention like that no no no, no. they like to be admired the sun and I'm going to give you some buzzwords for the sun because a lot of you guys are not really familiar when it comes to astrology of how to associate different words with planets and signs and houses so the sun represents, you know, being admired. It's the royal, it's the regal, it's the spotlight, it's the, it's the fire, it's the, um, and I want to say attention in the sense of like respect because, I, you know, the sun also represents honor, okay? And Leo's want people to like respect them like put them in high regards like oh my gosh she's so amazing oh like in the way that people did obama remember when obama you know was elected and it was all of this it was like oh my gosh she's so amazing he just carries himself well look how he speaks and blah 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 it was such a, like a, a a pedestal type of vibe right that we hadn't seen before in that way the way in which he had more of like fans like leos like to be pedestalized like i have fans like people adore me people love me people praise me that sort of thing uh, people respect me the respect has to be there. It's really strong with them it's really strong with them so it's it's more of a sense of like i want your respect I want your praise. I am your I want to lead you. Like I want you to look up to me in all sorts of ways, particularly in intimate relationships. Like they're the type that like wants, you know, somebody to be waiting at the door and like jump into their arms and that sort of shit. Like they they want, you know, their partner to be, you know, have their picture on their phones. Like they want the type of praise that a Scorpio couldn't care less about like we couldn't care less about that like at all that is not important to us whatsoever you don't have to praise me you don't have to put me on a pedestal in fact it's such a turn off to a Scorpio if you have all this praise if you have all of this admiration like oh my gosh i just love this and that about you and blah 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 blah. like we literally it's not a necessity for us it's such a turn off to it 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 it's just like what are you doing like what are you like what are you trying to do here you know whereas for them it's like oh my gosh the biggest the, you know that this is what they do things for they they want to be that light in the sky they want to be the you know you're up looking at it like oh like that's their thing <laughs> and you know when you have an individual who wants to be revered in that sense and who's very domineering because the sun is the circuit breaker the sun is the circuit breaker the sun is your whole entire light everything is filtered through the sun so you can talk about your rising talk about your moon all day all of that personality is still going to come through the sun. So the sun is the generator, literally. Um, you know, as soon as you put the generator on, you know, when the lights go out in your house and everything's pitch black, you're looking for the light. <laughs> you're literally looking for the light. You got your, your lighters out, your, your, the candles, you're trying to get find the matches. You're trying to find that generator. Boom. As soon as you hit it up, all the lights come on. And now you can see, right? Now everything is out. This is this is what they want. They want the light. They they're always looking for the light. Always like, where's the light? Where is it? Where can I see it? Like a mosquito. All they're always attracted to that light. And so you have the Scorpio who lives in the dark. We like the dark. We like behind the scenes because then we can see you. We can see everything you're doing. Okay, if you're in the light, you're not really watching what's going on behind you because you're like here. You're like, yay. And you're not paying attention. You're not paying attention. You're not reading the room. You're only reading the room for fans. But Scorpios read the room for everybody else. And we know that when the lights go out, that's when all the bullshit comes on. 
That's when that's when that's when the killers come out, honey. That's when you get in before dark, right? Why? Because the dark shields, the dark hides. People turn into different individuals when it's dark because nobody can see them. But the Scorpio can see. We like the dark. We like when the lights goes out. Because we're like, oh, that's who you really are when the light goes out. Now, now we have a clear vision. <laughs> so you have a person who needs the light and a person who needs the dark. Something's going to be a big problem with the two. Because somebody's going to be fighting for the light and somebody's going to be fighting for the dark. And the dark means you stripped all the way down. Like forget the tap dancing on the stage. Now you have no audience. No one gives a shit. Nobody's around. No spotlights on you. How are you going to behave now? And Leo's always going to fight for the light. They're going to fight tooth and nail for it. They're going to fight tooth and nail for it. And when they don't get it, they get very arrogant and ugly. So you guys remember, in my book, Dating Scorpio, the opening scene was with the Leo. When I was in college, I had a brief, um, I don't even know what to call it, because I wasn't dating the guy. I didn't love him. I wasn't in love. It wasn't anything. There was no tingly, emotional. He was much older than me. Maybe that was intrigued. Like, eh, okay, he's older. What, what you got, right? Turned out to be nothing. <laughs> Unfortunately. And I remember um, he got very upset. You guys have read the story, but I'll just give you a tidbit. He got livid because I would never praise him. I don't care what he did. I would never come out with a praise. And that's the thing with Scorpios. We're never, go we're never ever, ever going to fake flatter you, fake praise you, give you some light you didn't earn. Never. And the more you tap dance for it, the tap dance means, you know, um, Leos tend to give other people flatter, flattery. Um, remember, gosh, I did the, the Katy Perry video where uh, Call Me Daddy, I think that's the Call Her Daddy, Call Me Daddy, um, the podcast where, you know, the host is a Leo. And I showed you guys in that conversation where she was trying to give her some flattery and Katie was not budging. It was just like, no, honey, I'm not, you blowing up my ass, is, that's not what I want. So the girl couldn't really read the read her. You know, she was blowing up her ass, trying to give her some praise. You're the best, you're the this and that. She was like, anyway, and she went on to something else, trying to get out of that. Let me escape this bullshit that she's doing. But what she really was wanting was for her to be like, oh my gosh, no, you are. You, you are, you're amazing, you're like, that didn't work. So she really didn't get what she needed. And that's something that Leos do. That's something that um, this Leo did and I didn't return it. He got very upset. Um, <laughs> gosh. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna spoil it for you guys who haven't read it. But, ooh, 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 did he turn into who he is in the dark. And that's what Scorpios wait for. We wait for the revelation. We wait for the version of you when you can't get what you want. The version of you when you're not getting attention, when you're off the stage. Who do you become when you're off the stage? Who do you become when nobody's looking? Who do you become when nobody's telling you how great you are? Who are you then? Who is that version of you then? And the version of him then was so ugly. It was so ugly. And he came for me, honey. And I came for him because I was young. And back then, I hadn't mastered my ignoring game, darling. And ooh, I ripped his ass apart. And he felt so stupid. And one thing a Leo does not want to do is feel stupid. <laughs> okay? They do not want to be clowned, honey. Make a fool of them. Oof, that is the worst. That is the worst. That is the absolute worst. And so 
that's where the square come in. The square comes in with with the the needs not getting met. I don't need you to fake flatter me. I don't need you to tell me how great I am. I don't need any of that stuff. In fact, if you never ever in my life told me like, oh my gosh, you're this and that, honey, you 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 would be doing me a favor. Because I know what we, in Scorpios, we know what we do. We know our achievements. We know who we are. We read the room very well. And we read the room in the light and the dark, okay? We read the room in the light and the dark. So you don't have to be the one. Like, there is no benefit for you to tell me how amazing I am. There's no benefit. There's no benefit. Because I know what I do. I'm very, very self-aware, right? So where the mismatch comes in is when you have this person who's always looking for the light, who's the mosquito, okay? Always looking for the light. And if you're the light, they're looking for you. And I will say this. I will tell you some of the things that I've noticed about hanging around strong Leos. And if you're a Leo and you're in the comment section and you're not really a strong Leo, I've I'm coming from the basis of the doubles and the triples and the ones who are, you know, the sun is very active in their chart and they're like fifth houses. Like they're, they are Leo, Leo, Leos, honey. I will say this. I will say that when there was some type of friction, because Leos are masculine, right? Women and men, masculine energy. Their comeback, their, their, their defense is to strong arm. I talked about this when I talked about Aries. It's to dominate. It's to strong arm. It's to put fear with like being very loud and aggressive. Everything gets loud and aggressive with them. Whereas Scorpio, I don't have to say anything. I shut down. I go silent. So you know how they need the circuit break? circuit breaker um on i shut that motherfucker down boom now we're all in the dark and they don't want to be in the dark a mosquito does not want to be in the dark they're like fuck where's the light and i keep my hand on that bitch because i can see in the dark i can feel in the dark i feel energy through the dark i'm like ooh. i hear heartbeats and all that shit becomes very very pronounced i'm like now i can see all of you guys you know how like when you're watching the nature video and you see the animals and their eyes are made so that they can see in the dark <laughs> and their eyes turn like that's me in the dark like oh oh this is what we're doing so I shut everything down now there's silence now there's no talking now there's no your strong arming isn't working because I'm water and the one thing that that um that can put out fire what do you reach for when there's a fire What's the first thing you reach for? <laughs> Put that in the comments. When there is a blaze, what is the first thing that you reach for to put that shit out? Okay, so I don't have a problem. I don't have to come back with words. I don't get aggressive or anything. Um, so many years ago, I had a Leo friend that I met when I was going to school in the Caribbean. Um, when I was much younger, <laughs> actually. And she gravitated towards me because I am the light. You know, I was a model, and that's that's a big deal for them because I'm in the spotlight. So it's like, oh, shit, well, let me, let me attach myself to her so that I can get some of that shine. A Leo always knows who's kind of important. They always know who's in the spotlight. They always know who has some um, notoriety. They can sniff that a mile away. That's their superpower because they gravitate towards that. And so she smelled me out. I was like, ooh, oh yeah. I can tell this girl has a little of, a little of importance, right? So let me come around her. In fact, I want to say this is, a, this is something that I've noticed in my life. I've never been friends with a Leo. Um, who didn't attach to me because of that reason and that is true I don't think that Leo's would be attracted to me if I weren't on TV if I weren't in a magazine 
if I were not, if I didn't have something that they kind of wanted, like all of them. I can't think of one who just wanted to be my friend. You know, it was always like, oh, you're in this, you're in that. Let me, let's hang out. You know what I'm saying? Which is like, oh, really? <laughs> you know, um, interesting. So they're always looking for the light, always. And they're, they always attach to things that they feel are very important or things that they that are that they can reach for, that they can get some of it. Like, let, let me have that shine rubbed off on me or maybe you'll introduce me to somebody and maybe I will. You see what I'm saying? And so when it comes to the Leo, the typical Leo and the typical Scorpio, there's always that mismatch of like, I'm not going to get my needs met because the Leo wants to be adored and um, um, admired all day long and we're not just not gonna do it I'm not gonna do it you're not getting oh do you like my shoes you didn't say that you liked my haircut this is how they are right oh you didn't like my haircut and I'm like change the topic immediately like I'm not kissing your ass like I just won't do it and so then they feel slighted and then comes the strong arming that's okay, blah, blah, blah. It's like all this aggressive stuff that doesn't work and then I have to go right over to the circuit breaker <laughs> just shut that bitch off. Boom! Now we're in the dark. Now we're in my space. And so there tends to be that sort of thing and that's some very heavy friction um, because Leo thinks that they can dominate and Scorpio's the water. We're the one that can put out the fire. You know what I mean? Like we will drown you. We will drown you in silence. We will drown you. We will take everything that you want away. And, um, because we're sensitive and we can feel everybody's insecurities. We know your insecurities right up front. We will completely just, um, very quietly too, strip you all the way down where you're just like, and my Leo friend, who's a double, you know, there was a time we were in the kitchen. This is a roommate that I had. And he just came out and said something. He was like, ooh, Malika really knows how to make a man feel like shit. And I was like, wow, where did that come from? I didn't even respond. I didn't say anything, which is a typical Scorpio thing. It's like, okay, keep giving me information. Let me know where your insecurities are. And I guess... Maybe I made him feel like that. Maybe he, that's what he picked up because I wouldn't flatter him. I, literally, I just um, was going through old emails and I saw a picture of us when we were out at the club. You know, it's a fabulous picture, by the way. But of course, he always liked to have me out at the club where people can see us because I was in the magazine. So it was like, you know, kind of like borrowing my shine, which I don't really care because I'm not trying to you know be some big celebrity or anything but he secretly wanted that i wouldn't say a relationship with a leo is toxic i would say more than the scorpio trying to dominate the leo because we like don't even care i think it would be the opposite i think that leo needs the light so much that they would be trying to bring us into that or um, create scenarios where they want us to come out of the shadows. You know, I haven't had a situation in my life where I tried to bring Leo down into the dungeon, honey. Um, I just didn't care enough. I didn't care like, okay, you want to go out, you want to try and be a celebrity. Okay, what does that have to do with me? You know what I mean? Like, but from my experience, They've always been around me because I was the one in the position that they wanted to be in. And I can't say that I really cared. I didn't care either way because none of it ever panned out for them. Like they never gained anything significant. Like they never got in a magazine. They were never in TV. The Leo female friend that I had, you know, she tried and she was just like, oh, how can I do this? And how can I do that? And then got really bitter once it never panned out for her, you know. And so I really didn't care. I think more than anything, the Leo will feel slighted that the Scorpio likes to stay in the shadows and I think many people feel like that when they're around us because they're always trying to bring us up to where they are and we just don't care like we would just turn around and walk away and that's another thing they hate is 
when we get very silent and we could be very passive because we're feminine so we couldn't care less like i'm not arguing with you i'm not fighting with you i don't even care like they need something to ignite and this is why air sign fuels them because if you light a little candle you know when you blow it that's when the fire starts to grow oxygen makes it grow and if you take that oxygen away like you put the lid on the candle the fire will go out completely so when they're in the vicinity of water they're trying to ignite something but <laughs> here's the joke go out into the ocean and try and um, light a fire underwater like it's t it doesn't even make any sense so they're usually the ones the fire energy is usually the ones trying to ignite something make something happen and i think that's when they start getting argumentative and they start getting bossy like they're trying like it's just a natural nature to try and ignite and start something and the water is so free flowing we can just kind of just splatter them a little bit and it'll be over now let's talk about this pisces cancer because it's, it's so strange how people are like you know, okay, well, Leo's the most toxic, but like, are these the perfect matches? Like, those are the only ones available in life. So, you know, if you are a strong Scorpio like me, who appreciates somebody who I don't have to be a bodyguard for, I'm going to just put that out there. I don't have to be your bodyguard. You are self-sufficient. You're not calling me what you may do. You're not a whiny little brat. You're not acting like a four-year-old. You're not in a fetal position. You know the worst thing that I've seen? The worst combination ever. And I just, I just realized this. Is a really strong Leo who has like a cancer moon. <gasps> oh my goodness. It is like the worst thing. And you would think you were like, oh, well, you know, have a nice cancer moon and, and then the fire of Leo looks good. No, it is horrible. It is like this really strong, outgoing person. And then behind the scenes, they turn into little bitches and they're, they're needy and whiny. I told you guys a long time ago about the double Leo that I briefly befriended, honey. And I got up out of there within days. She was calling like 10, 15 times a day. My mother was like, is that her again? Hang up, block her. Like, I never seen my mother <laughs> say anything of the sort. And she was like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with her? I was like, I don't know. And she became so attached, which is so unlike Leo. Leo's so independent and like fiery. But to have that combination, I can't even think of the word right now. I was so repulsed by that. I dislike really strong signs and then they have this kind of babyish attitude about them where I need to come in and save you. There was a couple of times where people were was attacking her and she kept like asking for my help and I was like wait what is going on? This It was so bizarre guys. It was so bizarre and so I was like oh is this real? Like what is going on? So when we start talking about the Cancer and the Pisces, this is what happens. Like they're always waiting for me to come save them. They're always like waiting, like, <gasps> like somebody attacks you, they attacked you, handle your shit. You know what I'm saying? Hand, handle yourself. Cause I can handle myself in all scenarios. Like I don't care if there's three, four, five people like verbally coming at me, honey, I can handle, I can handle my space all the time, physically, on YouTube, social media, whatever, like I can handle, I control my room, I can control my space. And that is something that Cancer and Pisces cannot do. They're always looking for the person who's helping them. Like they're the ones that like will come home and be like, oh my gosh, it's such a bad day. And like it would be like a whole whining type of thing. And it would be whining as in like they're waiting for me to fix the problem. Like that fucking repulses me. So when we start talking about perfect matches and this, that, and the other, I want you guys to refrain from throwing, you know, the other water signs into the mix. I am not codependent. I do not feel good when people need me and rely on me. I actually get very triggered by that and very disgusted by it. And um, I won't do that to you. Um, my fights are my fights and I can handle my fights pretty well 
I'm not looking to you to solve my problems. And this is an issue that I've had with Cancer and Pisces my whole life, even though I have not naturally befriended them for some reason. I told you guys I only had a few of them. They don't naturally come to me to, you know, get really close with. I guess they can smell that type of thing like, no, she's gonna abandon me. There was a Cancer roommate that I had I remember her saying something that just kind of came out of nowhere. She was like, oh, if something happens to me, you're just going to leave. I was like, what the fuck is this? It was so just like the Leo like blurted that thing out. Like she blurted that out. So it was like, wow. So, you know, there's some like fear of abandonment with them. You know, there's this this iron grip, that claw that you need to literally cut off um to get away from them i don't i dislike feeling like you're gonna trap me or i have to be in some relationship with you i have to protect you i have to come out fighting for you you know it it makes me feel like you're just weak and one thing scorpio hates is weak people okay this is something i'm going to talk about during scorpio season um weakness it, it, it is one of those things that is just like once we think you're weak, it's, it's pretty much over. It is the disdain that we have underneath the surface for you is so great. Once I see that you're fucking weak, that you cannot defend yourself, that you're waiting for me. Did you hear what he said to me? I sure did. What are you going to say back to him? Well, I don't. Well, what? Are you waiting for me? Like, I, I hate cowards. That's one thing I don't have to worry about with Leo is being a fucking coward. They can fight their own battles. They will not come in the house. I'm like, look what happened to me. Like, it won't even be a conversation. Like, I probably won't even know about it. Maybe I'll hear it through somebody else and be like, oh, you ain't telling me. Like, like they can just handle their shit. And so if I have to choose between a Leo and a Cancer and Pisces, like, I'm not going to choose either of them. <laughs> I don't have to you know what I'm saying it depends on the scenario uh you know in all seriousness it depends on the scenario you know if I'm at work and I, you know I I want to be around somebody who knows what they're doing who's not going to be whiny who's not going to be complaining then I'll probably pick the Leo you know they're just looking for fun they're going they know what they're doing they can go handle themselves you know but you know, if I'm at the hospital and that is a place of compassion, I probably want a Cancer or a Pisces, right? Because they are more intuitive and they are softer. They have that feminine energy. I remember when my, my brother was making his transition, there was a very disrespectful nurse that I almost jumped on his fucking ass. I really did. And I, and I, ooh, I was so, um, I was like five seconds off him. And my brother's lying there, like taking his last breaths and this motherfucker was talking shit. And I said to him, and I was really respectful. I really was. I, I, I was, um, I wanted to give him something. I decided I wanted to give him something. I said, I'm not going to fight this guy. Like, he's not going to help. My brother's still going to die. But he was showing his ass and he didn't have any compassion. He was very cold and detached, which is not good in that sort of environment. It's not good in that sort of environment. That's a good personality to have in other environments, but not working in the medical field where compassion is necessary, it's part of your job. And I said to him, I gave him something. I, you know, I told him that, um, I asked him how long he, he'd been in this profession. He said eight years. I said, I just want to give this something to you and I don't want you to respond to me. I want maybe you to take it home and think about it. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. I said, you know, in a profession like yours where compassion is necessary, I said, I just want to let you know that that's not one of your greatest strengths. And I implore you to really take a look at yourself because people that you care about are going to die too. They're going to die. And there may be somebody, and this is, I'm just paraphrasing, there may be somebody who will behave in the way that you're behaving right now and you're really not going to enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? And so it was somewhere that to the fact those were not the exact words. <laughs> but, you know, if I were in that scenario, 
I prefer a Cancer or a Pisces over Leo for sure. For sure, 100% hands down. Okay, in a relationship, if I had to, I'd rather deal with Leo shit than to deal with the bullshit that these two got going on. Because I'm not the type of Scorpio that needs to be needed. Do you understand me? And maybe you guys are. Many of you are. Many of you come to the comments. And I swear, Pisces, you're on their payroll. I swear some of you are on their payroll. You're in my comments talking about, oh my God, Pisces, is they just so intuitive. They're so perfect. They're so sweet. I'm like, honey, how much are they paying you? <laughs> how much are they paying you to say all this bullshit in my comment section? I don't need that. Okay? Unless somebody's dying, I don't need that. I don't need you to come home and start whining. I don't need to see you in a fetal position. I don't want to pet you. I don't like. I don't want to hear all that bullshit. I don't want to fight your battles. I don't want to do any of that. I want you to stand up for yourself. I want you to protect yourself, defend yourself. I want you to feel good about yourself. I am not your mother. I don't want to be your mother either. Okay, and you certainly don't have to be mine. I don't need you to be like, oh my gosh, but like get away from me. Like that is so annoying to me. I dislike it. I like powerful people, strong people, people who are not phased, people who stand on their own two feet. And um, I don't really have to choose. When we talk about matches and all this and that, I want you to think about all these things. Think about what type of Scorpio you are. And be honest. Some of you are codependent. You love weak people because it makes you feel powerful. Okay. And I know this because when I was young, I had this, this condition as well. And I'm so happy that I got out of that because I resented those people. And you guys know that you do too. You resent Pisces. You think they're weak too. You do. When it comes down to it, you're like this fucking weak ass bitch. I always got to defend her. She's always whining. She can, she will never come out swinging for me. Ever. Ever. Malika, so-and-so was talking about me. I'm thinking of all the things through high school and college. Oh, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? They, they're not trying to fight with me. What are you going to do? Hmm? All right, guys. I know I triggered many of you. I know you're going to be in these comment streets. Thank you for sharing my videos. Hit up scorpionsunscorpionmoon.com for chart readings, the quiz to see what type of Scorpio you are. Also, take my astrology quiz so that you can win a huge discount. Uh, Scorpio season is coming soon. And I have so much for you guys. Join my memberships. I talk about astrology. I talk about self-esteem. I talk about pretty much everything. That's where you're going to get more time with me anyway. So let me give you guys a kiss. You need it. This was a doozy. <laughs>